now I have to ask you a question that listen to me. I'm the captain now. It's gonna be weird. I feel like the GPS is like going crazy. We are going to Haiti. And I should be somewhere right here. Yeah. Nothing should leave you. Put it down and start of But it's gonna be asked on my channel. But the GPS is putting me right here. So I want your explanation for this. Uh, is the world flat? Isn't it? I think oh, so. I don't know you. Because actually, I'm, I'm a What's up guys, it's the next day and uh, I have to go check my jacket out. Um, they wanna check the size on it. So, I don't think it fits me. I already tried it on, but I'll show you. It didn't fit me. So, uh, right now what they're doing is they're doing uh, size testing. So this is how the jacket looks on me. It's, it's kind of tight, see? Right here and then right here, yeah, it doesn't close right, it's not comfortable. So, I'm gonna go downstairs and they're gonna change it. They told everybody come downstairs, check it out, and also come try on some boots. All right, this right here, these two layers on this jacket, this two layers right here on the jacket feels real comfortable. I don't feel like I need to put anything out of the, than that, but uh, yeah, let's go downstairs and check it out. Also, uh, what they did yesterday, I didn't know, was they also did a safety procedure. Just talking about where you need to go if there's an emergency. They showed us uh, if you're in a particular spot, make your way to the safety boats that are on the, each side of the ship, and that way you can uh, <laughs> escape if something crazy happens. So here it is right here. This is the <laughs> boat. This one and this one on this other end right here. And these boats right here can carry each over a hundred and something people each. It's crazy that you, you think that you can put a hundred people in a boat like this, but apparently they, they set up a way where you can do it. Um, but <laughs> I'm thinking 25, 20, it makes sense. 25, 25, 25, you're thinking in those numbers right here. But it may, they emphasize you not bringing anything with you except uh, medication, so. All right, let's go downstairs. I was already downstairs. I thought, you know, I gotta show you this. So give you the lifestyle of living on the boat. I was talking to some of the staff. Staff, super cool. And they were telling me uh, to see if I can talk to somebody on whether or not I can show you guys a little bit of their lifestyle, how they live on the boat. Um, I always wanted to work on a boat, to be honest with you. And so, before I became a vlogger, I wanted to still see the world. And I thought, and I actually applied to work at a boat. But uh, I didn't get the job. But uh, oh, what's up, man? Hey, how was last night? I came out too late. I went to sleep, we man. We dance. You dance? 4 a.m. Oh, oh, tomorrow I'm, I'm there. But tonight's a tango party. I'm there. Yeah. I'm tango. Finally, I'm doing tango, guys. All right. Hello. Hello. All right. Okay, here we go. So he got to my size ready. <laughs> yeah, that looks a lot bigger. All right, hold on. Okay, let me put this right here. Okay. <laughs> stick, stick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't tried the boots. Please do, because in case the size does not match, we'll okay. replace it. I didn't they have must boots be in the they were in the room? In the locker. And this number of the locker is oh. similar to the number of your cabin. Okay, so, so cabin are you 629. That's fine. Okay, alright, cool. Let's try these boots right there. <laughs> That's the new one you've given you yesterday? Yeah, that's the yeah. new one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So check the boots. Okay. Yeah. Alright, let's check okay. out. Uh, can I? Right here. Yeah. So this is my locker, I guess. So after every trip, you come here and you leave your stuff here. Uh, uh, from your trip. And these are supposed to be 12s. I asked for a size 12. They're 46. And let's check them out. So to give you a look at how the boots are and how high they are. They're high and designed so you don't have to, uh, cold water heating your feet. Do you feel me? So it goes all the way up to right here. So 
So you got a good angle. It's uh, pretty much good. All right, see how difficult these things are. Try it out. They are super warm. Oh man. They're, they are super warm. And they are super comfy though. Let's see, put both of these on. I thought I would have to wear shoes. Oh, the shoes with these. But the, they have this little swing thing because you see how this bends? But it's necessary. <laughs> And then I get a look at it right from here. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm stylish already, man. I look, I look like a model up in here, right? I don't look like no model, man. Yeah, all my life I've been called a model, you know what I'm saying? Fabio. You know what I mean? Uh, girls would be like, who you think you are sitting up like a model? I said, this, this is naturally how I post off. You know what I'm feel me? <laughs> This is good. They're good. good? Yeah, they're good. They're not like still told, but they're very sturdy on the corner right here. So, I don't think these will be annoying to walk on snow. So, I think these will be quite good and they feel very warm too. I might be wearing these pants on top of my um, waterproof pants just so I don't feel the cold weather. Um, just to see, we'll test it out, but this is not that bad. Let me zip this up too, just to make sure it's comfortable. We will be doing this again tomorrow, so don't feel you have to rush down. But whatever room you're in, if you'd like to come down for your group fitting now, we will be there. So they said they're doing this tomorrow, but you might want to do it today just to, just to avoid any issues about lack of shoes or lack of. But well, they should be ready. I'm actually, editing content. I'm walking with it to just feel the the whole zippage feelage. It's uh it feels, it feels super warm. Man. Oh these pockets are real deep so they're good for my camera. I think I'm good to go. I got my gloves upstairs. So I got this, I have something to cover my face, just in case of the wind chill. This is not bad, yo. Thank you. I usually do like this. All right, guys. So now it's time to take the shoes off, and it's the challenging part. <laughs> so he tells me this. Uh, this is the best way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. It works. <laughs> As opposed to just grabbing it and just hold it like that. Good to go. Uh, you need a jacket and a locker? Uh, no, no, no jacket, but today you're having. Okay, got it. Okay. But the shoes will leave here. Okay. Is there like a like a snack area or something? Snack area, uh, deck seven. Deck seven. Deck seven, club lounge. Yeah. You have coffee, tea, fruit, and cookies. Oh, a cookie. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. All right, guys, so today they're doing some form of cocktail meeting with the captain. So we're going to go check it out, get to know a little bit more of the staff. Hello, hello. Dick, there's the staff captain and the safety officer, I can see. Please welcome. <laughs> and she's been having the best time ever. Did you see how she came out? She came out with the. <laughs> okay, uh, here. She reminds me of the woman from yes. Reno 911, the the okay. woman cop. So this is the staff, guys. Ladies and gentlemen. May I raise a toast for this cruise 
and to you that you will get memories which will never forget. Cheers. I need to go get a wine bottle. I just walked in. Okay, there we go. There we go, guys. I was uh, kind of late because I'm dealing with uh, editing. I got to tell myself to stop doing that. I don't want to miss out on the the amazing uh, trip this is. So, uh, have you seen any animals? Uh, dolphins. I have seen a bunch of dolphins. Where, where? From this side or that side? That side, yeah. That was like uh, three hours ago. I heard the captain saying, look out with your binoculars or something like that. I think you see the whales or something, yeah. But I really see she came in like a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's time to eat again. <laughs> this is uh, dinner time. It's, uh, my second day on the boat, or my first official day on the boat. And yeah, this is uh, this is one of the plates I'm gonna be eating today. All right. This right here is the Drake Passage. After finished talking to the staff, they told me that this right now yeah, is light. Normally it can get really rough. There's times when the water is reaching all the way up to this uh, this window right here. So we're really getting some good weather thus far. Um, a friend of mine told me we're able to see some dolphins running around here. So in the hotel room, they gave me some binoculars. I didn't even know I was just walk, looking at stuff and there's binoculars in my room just in case I want to check some things out. Let me enjoy this meal. Next on the list is uh, seafood and tomato bisque uh, soup. Okay, here we go. Nice, okay. Really good, really good. A uh, grapefruit sauve. I don't know what that means, but it's supposed to be something you eat to clear the palate. All right. That's grapefruit. And this is the main course right here, guys. Basically, in the morning, you'll have your typical buffet breakfast. You'll have eggs and all that extra stuff. I didn't want to show that, but I just wanted to show you what you probably would get on the ship here. I'm not going to film any more food unless it's like something way out of the ordinary. But, uh, well, these presentations I've been showing you have been immaculate, but either way, just wanted to show you what you were expected to get. This is a presentation, just scenery. Pretty, pretty, really nice, man. Really nice ambience here. All right, guys. Yo. Raspberry? Souffle. Souffle, all right. Here we go. Raspberry souffle. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it looks awesome. Amazing. All right. Thank you, sir. Now, see, I think you guys did it right. You need to have the ice cream with that, so you can get a scoop of ice cream and a scoop of that. I think that's the way that's done. Okay, this one you gotta eat with the chopsticks. Uh, the chopsticks? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? It's, um... You know, I can't tell what time it is because um, right here it says it's 5.54 a.m. All right, that's not actually the time here on my phone. It says it's 12.55. This is the time I believe it is, okay? So why am I talking to you? Okay, I just came from the bar. I've been drinking my Long Island iced teas. And a friend of mine, she was telling me how she's going to San Andreas. So I guess she, because she thought I was going to link up with her or something, I, I sent her a picture of where I'm at. This, all right? And then this, like to let her know, like, yo, I'm not in the, <laughs> anywhere near her. And I was curious to see what was that, that area. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not in no port. I'm literally in the ocean right now. And I zoom out and it puts me in Finland area, which is not exactly where we at. So I feel like the GPS is like going crazy, but it's crazy cause I should be somewhere right here, but the GPS is putting me 
right here. What made things worse is I, I, I did the same thing here and I'm here. All right, I'm gonna show you right now. All right, this is another map. All right. I'm in the boat, so it's taking a while. It's not gonna be fluid like what you would see on the regular internet. So this is what I see. Boom, boom. Shows me where I was staying, a uh, club I was at for my birthday, but I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. And this, so this is normal. This is my private account right here. I'm not gonna click on it. Anyways, I'm gonna click here. See where the hell your boy is at. When I first saw it, I was like, what the heck? Do you see this? They brought me right here. Or did you see that stuff? Did you see that stuff? It brought me right here. <laughs> okay, curse. But yo, it brought me right here, the same place. GPS is messing up. Oh, GPS is right. I don't know what my phone's doing. Today, I woke up sick. I was in a uh, feeling too good. And so I took me um, some seasick pills, took one and then I went to eat some breakfast and I thought I would be good. And nope, uh, I had to <laughs> take all of it out. Uh, but I'm feeling a lot better there's supposed to be a meeting today for a zodiac basically if you want to do anything you have to attend these meetings that way when you when it's time to use certain services um you can you know what time it is also there's a kayak meeting so i'm gonna be doing both um the lady in the hallway told me that uh we just got one more day of this uh, well, tomorrow I should be. It's, we should be done with the, this rocking and rolling. So I'm very excited over that. Um, yeah, man. So let's go to this uh, zodiac meeting. I'm gonna bring you with me so you can see. And uh, hopefully, you know what? I want. Hopefully today, maybe we can uh, learn about more about the staff today as well. All right. Um, still loving my room. Loving the extra space I have. Did I need this? absolutely i did <laughs> absolutely no regrets uh if you think about it the room is like uh a uh, thousand uh, eleven hundred a day or something like that that's what i'm paying um to stay here eleven hundred and for this unique trip i think it's worth it man i think it's worth it i talked to the the girls i met earlier and they were there they're in a bunk a room where it's three girls and um one of the girls said she paid $5,000 to be in a bunk room with two other girls. So there you have it. One gentleman, he's also in a bunk room, but um, because the ship is not fully packed, there's a lot of rooms available. So he's trying to work out a deal where he pays a little bit more and get a private room. Now that's an interesting strategy. Um, if you are in a boat that's empty, but to be honest with you, because of all the constellations that happened this year, a lot of people are going to be coming next year. And if you look at the prices online, it's some of it is double. So I wouldn't, I could imagine this room being a lot more expensive if you can get it, lock it down early. But uh, I could imagine that these um, ships are going to be full. This is actually it's the ship's fifth trip to Antarctica. So it's fairly new the people are used to doing this now but it's it's fifth trip to antarctica so it's uh it's it's fairly interesting you know what i mean so this is the boat right here i 
I have severe sickness. It's the Drake Passage. This right here, this body of water that we're going through. Uh, it said it could be the roughest in the world. Right now, it is actually not as tough, but it's still not something a lot of people go through, even for sailors. So uh, the, it, the, the current is very strong. So it could be some strong rocking and rolling and it can t take a toll to you. But once you pass this area, the waters are a lot calmer and you can enjoy your time. Before I leave, do I need to vomit again? Yeah, I probably need to vomit again, so let's do that. All right, guys, we are back in the main lobby and I'm going to show you the laundry room, all right? Okay, this is uh, a little bit closer to in front of the, the ship area for floor. And there you go. Laundry, right? Hi. Ah. Yes, sir. Okay. And then, so here you go. Got an iron board. And you got the machines right here. Super dull. In order to use these, you just have to put them in there and put set the time, see color. And then it'll put the detergent and everything in there for you. So you don't have to worry about putting that extra stuff. So I think that's super dope um, when you come on the ship. Granted, it's only three machines, three washers, three dryers. But just in case you're like, yo, I need to use to clean something, there you go, it's there for you. All right, super dope. Don't bring plastic bags. Don't wrap up your camera in a plastic bag because you pull that out and it tends to just fly away. Um, this can also be said for masks, of course. We've all seen masks everywhere now littering our streets, so we really don't want any in Antarctica. So definitely, one of the things I do instead of bringing a mask to shore is I use a neck buff and pull it up, and then uh, and it's easy to pull down and it remains around your neck. Every Antarctic species uh, are protected. So if you get too close or you interrupt them in any way, it's considered harmful interference. Most of them are not afraid of us, and it's a beautiful thing to see. So we want to keep it that way and let them enjoy their lives which are hard enough as it is without us uh, causing them any trouble. So we have all, we have given you all this um, Gore-Tex jacket for you to keep. We strongly recommend you wear this over any other brands that you um, that you purchased for these trips because you may get sprayed with salt water when you're in the zodiacs. Okay, we can't promise to keep you dry all the time in those boats. The Antarctic environment. Hey guys, now that we're done with the safety meeting of the Zodiacs, this is a normal procedure on landing. We have to take a test. Uh, this is a, a test we have to take every, uh, I guess, uh, the, 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 almost on the third day of leaving and then the third day of coming back as for uh, Argentina rules, just to make sure we're good before we get into the island. So, here we go. Or, um, test I'm talking about. You know what test I'm talking about. All right, yeah. All right, guys. Next meeting, kayak meeting. Learn about kayaking. All right, guys. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, so the meeting was just to let you know what to expect when you go kayaking. Um, pretty much the precautions and everything. Uh, I decided that I would show you a little bit more of this area by just uh, doing a little walk around and uh, giving you a good understanding of this place. Okay, so this is like the gym area right here. All right, treatment room. Let's see. Okay, oh, okay, here's your gym. All right, and it's fully operational. All right. Very okay. nice. All right. Just in case you want to see what they got. Okay. I haven't been in one of these in years, but uh, hopefully I get back to it. As you can see. All this type of equipment, treadmill, and there's also a sauna somewhere here. Check out the sauna. Okay. They let you know what doors you can't go through. So this is your sauna here. And uh, excuse me. This is the restroom right here. And oh. How, oh, nice, wow. With the music playing in the background. So you got a shower here. Is it personal shower? That's kind of weird. And then, yeah, this, this, this. oh, they give you a jacuzzi with it too. 
Oh, this is uh, super nice. And I guess that's the entry into the captain's um, area. Wow, I haven't been out. I didn't go out yesterday, but man, this place is amazing. It's super cold too. Floor is super wet, making sure I stand up this end of the area. Oh man. It feels good to be outside. Oh man, this morning I was feeling super sick. Now I'm feeling really good. I feel like the one side of the ship doesn't rock as hard as the other. I don't know. You don't really feel it. But look, we're gonna catch it the moment. Jack! Jack, don't die, Jack! <laughs> Iceberg! Iceberg! Is this door open? Yeah, this door open is cool. Cause it is freezing! <laughs> I was just trying to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> nice and toasty as soon as you come in there. All right. Okay. So if you're wondering, yes, this is a smaller ship, if I didn't mention it. Um, actually, bigger ships are not allowed to, to board Antarctica. So you need a ship that can hold around 500 people, I think, maximum. So if you're wondering, like, oh, hey, should I be on bigger ships? It, you can't go to Antarctica. Now, if you are on a bigger ship, you can, what's the word, uh, um, pretty much pass Antarctica. You can see things, but you can't land. All right, they might get close by, but no landing. All right, okay, so let's check out this area right here and see what's this about. Get closer to the pool area and maybe Jack and everybody else is still hanging out there. Okay. Hello. Hey, how are you? Getting in milk. Is this the lunch area or? No, babe. It's the this lunch Oh, this is the lounge area. Yeah, this is where tea time is. Oh, I didn't know. Every you know, I did. I was looking for this yesterday. I spent my time over there. I should have oh, really? came here. Yeah, this is nice because then the birds will come into the back area to yeah. follow the ship, so you can see all the birds. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's check it out. Got some cookies right here, guys. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> You're welcome. <sighs> Nine, nice warm and toasty. Staff members having a meeting over there. Okay. I thought I saw some alcohol, but that's just um, some jelly. Okay. People are having reading a nice book. Okay. And there we go. Boom. Outside. And yeah, this would be the ideal place to be hanging out. Um, just enjoying. Your, your vacation right here. They have a bar right here, music. So if, just in case you're watching this video because you want to see how the boat looks, the boat pictures are almost exactly the same way you're gonna see this place. Depending, this is its fifth trip to Antarctica. I think the ship has been operational for at least less than a year. The staff, they have hired really good seasoned staff. And I'm, you know, this uh, company has been running for years. So some of the staff got transferred. And yeah, this is, this is awesome, man. And here are the Zodiacs, guys. Wow, they have a whole fleet of them. Oh, there's nine of these here. Wow, guys, not bad. Not bad. This would have been dope. I ain't gonna lie. I wish before the trip end they would go somewhere warm. Just one warm day. One, two warm day right here. And we just hanging out. That would have been dope. That would have been perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get into the captain's quarters and see some of the staff quarters later on. Fingers crossed. But thus far, if you are enjoying this, uh, me showing you around, hit that like button. Greatly appreciate it. Okay. Hitting a like button is free, so don't feel like you're giving away something that's that you can't get back, okay? It's free, okay? <laughs> so these guys were just having a meeting on what's necessary about what's happening on the ship and everything, and so that's uh, kind of cool. How long you guys been in the business of, uh, in the cruise industry? Me, six years. Six years? <clears throat> yeah. Same. Yeah, okay. Six years. Well, you know, I always wanted to work for a cruise. I, I just, I didn't have the uh, like credentials or anything. But uh, what got you interested in doing this type of work? Uh, gosh, well, I was already working in the region. Uh, I was in the Royal Navy. Okay, for nice. Fifteen years. Okay. And um, 
part of my job was to patrol the Southern Ocean and I ended up working on um, uh, a bunch of islands where we were taking care of fishery patrol and keeping an eye on what's happening down in the Antarctic and then I got an introduction to um, a tour operator and then I felt that uh, you know that was something for me so I literally jumped ship here I am nice 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 <coughs> yeah similar sort of background so I was working on the cargo ships for the anti-piracy patrols out in the Gulf and uh, one of the jobs we got was to take a empty cruise ship, no passengers, through um, a high-risk area and from the, on the back of that we were driving the Zodiacs and uh, that's how I sort of got into this. Okay, that's, uh, no, that's awesome, that's awesome to hear. Now I have to ask you a question that it's going to be weird but it's going to be asked on my channel so I want your explanation for this. Uh, is the world flat? <laughs> no. It's not flat? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I've been around it to make sure it's not flat. <laughs> okay, today I was, well, last night I was using the GPS and it was showing I was in Sweden or something like that. <laughs> what was that one. about? No, you've probably got north and south mixed up on yeah. it. No, literally, I, I was showing, I sent a, like, a friend of mine my location to let her know that, like, hey, I'm on, a, on the middle of the ocean. And it showed I was in, <laughs> I know this is weird, trust me. Look, this where it showed I was at. That's weird. Right, right, yeah. Where is that then? It's probably because there's no um, commercial charts. Oh, no, that's, that's Finland. Oh, right, yeah, so that's yeah, where it, the ship is built. Yeah, it's, it's positioned you exactly where the ship is built. That's interesting. Mm. Because our, our satellite system, uh, our satellite system um, runs its service via Finland. Ah. So, it's, it's so you're, you're, you'll notice you're going to get a bunch of adverts, which are totally random. And that's because our satellite service is run through Finland. Okay, answered. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the world is not flat. We don't know yet, guys. So they're gonna wait until we get to the glaciers to look at. Yeah, we're soon, soon tell you. Okay, so is there any highlight of this trip that I need to look out for? You know, I've never seen snow before, so for snow? me that. What? Yeah, I've never seen it before. Okay, so wow. snow will be a highlight for sure. Time. Ice. Um, Ice, oh, yeah, big icebergs. Um, I think wildlife. if we, yeah, the wildlife for sure, <coughs> all the whales, the penguins, and we're going to visit a couple of historic sites, uh, like uh, abandoned scientific stations, and they're like time machines. Oh yeah, that, I need to do that. That's very cool. So we, we basically we go into these like old buildings, they're carefully managed, and in there is all the equipment left over from the 1950s and 60s. That's cool. Is that on the first one? Because um, I want to make sure I don't miss that because I have like kayaking to do too. I don't want to... I think the first one is, yeah, Stonington. Okay. Stonington Island. Generally when you're kayaking anyway, you get the opportunity to land where we are as well. So you get to see the stuff. I have enough time to check yeah, out the yeah, buildings? Definitely. All right, do cool. Do a boat, yeah. Okay. What is the weirdest thing you've seen on in the sea throughout your whole life? Weirdest? Weirdest thing? Um... I think uh, like mm, like weather phenomenons. Mm. So like uh, sometimes you get on a beautiful day when it's flat calm and there's no clouds. You, if the sun sets at just the right time and place, yeah. you get this effect called green flash. Oh. The sun sets and then because the ship is bobbing up and down, uh, the sun will kind of rise up again because the ship goes up. So you get this little green flash in the distance. Wow. Um, wow. Cool. It's very rare. Okay. Um, what else? Some of the wildlife you see is pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, you get the odd penguin that looks totally different mm. to its uh, fellow species. Um, so you have, so penguins are traditionally, you know, black and white and maybe a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have, um, and then you'll have this Random one, in albino one, or yeah, so you, yeah. So initially, like people will say it's an albino penguin, and actually, it's just a lack of pigmentation. Um, so you'll have like a completely white penguin or a completely yellow. Do they penguin. treat the penguin differently? No, no, no they don't get treated differently. Okay, no, no, they they seem to get on fine. And if you see one, it's rare. It's like one in thousands. One last thing. Yeah. I know I'm asking all these questions, but yeah. you guys have. Not every day I talk to guys like you. Um, do you feel weird being on land? It, you can do, yeah, if you've been on the ship a while. You get to, uh, 
Your legs seem to go a little bit wobbly when you're back on dry land. <laughs> you lose your sea legs. You feel more comfortable in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah you get so. used to it. You get used to working at sea. I've well, been working at sea for 20 years. You've been at sea what, pretty much uh, 25 years. You don't, there's no such thing as seasick for you guys because I was dying this morning, <laughs> man. I was. Oh, no, you can always still, it doesn't matter, you know, you can still suffer from that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's preparation before you get into rough weather, you know. You take the medication. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Appreciate it, man. No appreciate it. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. This is, this is gonna be a good video. I'm not gonna put everything in here, but it'll. Yeah. Uh, Just let us know what it's on for. Yeah. All right, guys. So we are going to the captain's den, and these are the people that's riding with me right here. <laughs> Hello. Okay. And we have the superstar right here. She's the superstar of the show. And uh, we'll see what happens. You know the gym already, right? Yeah, we saw the gym. I saw it earlier too. Oh, okay. So that's what this door is about. What is that? Nice. So they have all these offices right here, guys. And wow. Here it is. Wow. Oh my god, it's <laughs> okay. I'm not sure how he sees anything, but I guess he's looking at radar first. He trusts his radar more than he trusts his eyesight. I need to do Look at this, guys. Is this like Morse code or this is like some form of uh, <laughs> what, uh, earthquake? What is this? Our, our, uh, communication station. Okay, communication station. Okay. <laughs> She's already made herself home and captain already. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on board the Prince of SH Minerva. Today, the tour will be conducted by our safety officer Kai. He will give you a short introduction what we have here and so on. So, here on the bridge, we have a few different consoles. As you can see, here in the one in the middle, and a couple here on the side, and they all come with a little bit different purpose. Here in the middle, we have the main navigation console, where we are driving the ship. And here on the side, we have a couple other consoles with a little bit different purpose. Such as fin stabilizers, navigation lights, everything like this, additional systems. And on the both sides, there is like a miniature version of the controls that you can see here in the middle where we can also drive the ship, but that's of course only usually when we want to have visual look on the side of the ship, when we are coming alongside, or leaving the harbor, or special occasions like that. We can go a little bit more detailed, have a look what is here in the middle, and if you have any questions anytime, you know, we can just ask, of course. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. How, uh, so, what do you rely more on? The technology here or eyesight? Because I can't see anything so combination, far. A combination of both. Okay. So. For that reason, we always have Mr. Glenn, the quartermaster there. So he's always keeping a good eye outside. Okay. For the for the visually, for the let's say whales, ice, whatever. And uh, then we have also the radar, which is also keeping good eye for us. It's those antennas rotating on the top on the deck nine. If you go to have a look, and if they detect any targets, that will be visual here on the screen. So by the combination of both of these, you can uh, verify if there is something. So you cannot only rely on one system, but we want to have multiple systems that you can compare them to each other. So electronic charge, radar, and the visual lookout from the, from the window itself. Is this the thickest fog you ever experienced, or are you seen thicker fog? Yeah, it can be thicker. Once you don't see the full water of the ship anymore, then it's thick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it's been like that before yes. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah? Yeah, sorry, the question was, uh, do you know the size of our full tank? Few. How much is it? I don't remember it by heart, but I can I can have a look. <laughs> How much it is? It's well, approximately, approximately. Yeah, that's a good one. Good ah. one. Do you remember? <laughs> Nobody knows. How much we have? I don't remember exactly. Fuel, fuel tank. Uh, more than 600 tons. Yeah. Oh, more than 600 tons. tons. Oh. Nice. You know, uh, I heard this was a new ship, right? 
Yep. So could you talk about more about the ship itself? What what is its capabilities? I mean, it's like it's the fifth trip, or yeah. Well, what what do you mean by the capabilities? It's a it's a decent new ship, yeah. And uh, it's like a PC five Polar class five ship. So it has some eye strengthening and. Uh, yeah, it's very capable for this guy. strengthening, what, meaning, um, what is that process? I don't even know what that is. I mean, the, the, the ship itself, it's uh, it's like a build for the Polar Class 5. Okay. So it means that basically everything is classified for that. So the ship's hull, machinery, everything. Yeah. So that it has cert it has it meets certain capabilities that, uh, for instance, regarding the ice, that is strengthened to meet certain ice conditions and uh, without any harm. So it, it, is that considered ice breaking? Um, yeah, sure. well, I, yeah, it comes also a little bit on that, but uh, of course now we are here in the Antarctic areas and we are not, not really traveling in the first year steady ice. Okay. We are more having like multi-year chunks of ice in the water, so that's a little bit different approach. Usually that kind of ice you don't want to touch so much because it's hard as rock. Okay. Yeah, so it's not same like uh, same like the first year level ice. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay, guys. So this is uh, this is where everything gets done. <laughs> All right. This is where they're gonna call us to get on the lifeboats and everything if <laughs> the ship goes crazy. Not bad. And uh, this is like NASA, <laughs> like a cockpit for NASA. All right. So I'll give you a tour around. Yeah. And this right here, I saw the captain the other day. He's just looking, and wow, you really can see clear angle of, um, all the way to the end of the back ship. So that's really dope. Wow, you really see it. And on this area right here, I think it's the same thing. Let's see this area right here. All right. There you go. How many um, people do you need to be here to for to for it to be operational? So I know the captain's going on vacation. Yeah. So how many people you need uh, for just in case? Two people minimum. On the bridge, you mean? Yeah, on the bridge. On the bridge, we have normally like uh, <coughs> always a watchkeeping officer and a quartermaster. Mm -hmm. I said when we are here in the open sea, but then when we come to the closer to the harbor and the rest of the fairways, then we have always a little bit more here, like a senior officer and uh, depending on the situation, the captain decides to be also here himself, so it's always a little bit depending on the situation. But it doesn't mean if the captain is going for a holiday that uh, the ship is sailing without captain, so then there will be another captain. Yeah, they, yeah. you guys so. step up. Yeah, okay. So that's cool. how it works. But here is a small setup also of the instruments. Yeah. So uh, when we are, for instance, coming to the long side of the harbor, if we come this side alongside of the berth, then okay. we can take the control here on the port side ah. and just control the ship movement of from here. Oh, and then there's another one on that end that way. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Oh, okay. That's the reason for these these other consoles over here. All right, and this controls the this, this, this speed. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then it's the combination of the controls used to get the ship moving. On the wanted way to say. How long you guys? Uh, how long you been in the cru uh, cruise industry or just um, piloting ships? No, for me personally, this is the first season over here. So oh, was, okay, and this yeah. with this company. But what about um, career-wise? Yeah, I was I was before working uh, the different types of ships, so to say. So I kind of changed my industry. I was working long time on the multi-purpose icebreakers and oh. things like that. So oh, so you're knowledgeable about the yeah, yeah, the, these bit. waters. Okay, yeah, a little bit on the on the ice things. Getting on that here? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I so. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So I'm getting in the ship right here. Uh, we are now heading to Haiti. Listen to me. I'm the captain now. We are going to Haiti. <laughs> wow. This is beautiful, man. But you don't find yourself sitting on here too much. I'm assuming because the, the to arm reach to get to the, you no, know. We can adjust the chair a little bit. Oh, you can bring it down a little bit? Okay. 
All right. It's always blues, you know, the highest point for the show. Oh, for the show. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I totally understand. Totally understand. Okay. Wow. Um, Any time in your professional career has it been? Oh, I'm turning this camera on. Professional career, it has it been difficult. It, the waters were difficult. Waters were difficult. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. What should I say? Eh? I don't. <laughs> If, if you are trained to do it, it's your job, then it's your job, you know, it's uh, sometimes it's a bit more difficult than the other time. Okay. It's always doable. Okay. And one last question, and I'll leave you guys alone. <laughs> Is the world flat? <laughs> Isn't it? I think uh, so. I don't know. You, you have actually, a lot of... You I'm, a, lot of I'm a bit worried that if we go too south that we will tip over, you know. You, you sure? You don't know. <laughs> but you got a lot of, uh, you know, experience in the Arctic areas, so maybe you've seen some something weird in the water. But honestly, we haven't seen the edge yet. Oh, you haven't? No. You haven't made it there. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. I'm just saying that. All right, guys, you got to see uh, the captain's uh, control center here, the bridge. Um, super dope. Well, this is a fairly new ship, so everything you're seeing, all this is pretty new. Um, got to see the maps. I know it's flickering right now. Sorry about that. It's just uh, the way the camera works, but yeah, this is uh, very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, the security cameras. Oh, is that the engine room right there? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, you guys are really good at this, yeah. <laughs> wow, they're really good. <laughs> They're you. <laughs> so, let's do this first. Alright guys, we're doing a meeting on how we prepare to go kayaking. We have to put a full on body wetsuit on, and so this is what we're doing at the moment. Um, it's a really interesting thing, so they, they, safety is priority. So you prepare for the first coming days when you get on the boat to be going through a lot of training and courses and stuff like that, so, alright. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. How is it? <laughs> so I'm putting on my suit. Check it out. It's taller than me. Look at this. <laughs> so let's see how things go. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, okay this is how. Okay. If the screen goes black this yes, time. Yes, I can see you pretty well. All right, I have to wait a few months to wait for the shoes, so. Yeah. yeah. This is beautiful, man. All right, guys, I got both suit on, so. I gave me the shoes, everything here. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. See how you're both looking? Ah, it feels very comfortable. Yeah, a lot of room here, a lot of room for your boy and his boys.
And yeah, automatically my pants feel like they're sagging. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he wanted to see, yeah, he said. Um, but naked now, I ain't so nice. <laughs> yeah, perhaps everything fell. I'm just joking. zipper, you don't want to get wet there. Oh! Oh, so they give you that. They give you a zipper, guys, just in case you can't. Oh my God. It takes forever to take this thing off. We look like the Ghostbusters. <laughs> we look like we about to save some people, yeah. Yeah, like a fireman. Yeah, we look. So this is it, guys, so. Feels very comfortable walking in these shoes, actually. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Guys, now I have to get rid of the, all this excess air. Really, no air here. This, this, this is how my body really looks. But uh, just in case, what we're supposed to do is uh, open up here. Oh, open up here. And then what I do is sit down. The crouch. Uh, just to get some of the air out, so I don't float like a bubble bee. Like a, a, a ball, a ball, a beach ball, in the ocean. <laughs> oh yeah, I can feel, yeah, it's all stuck to my body now. Yeah, look. Oh, okay. Cool. There you go. Alright. So this is how you put a wetsuit on, guys. You ready? What um, continent is this? Number... Frankly, Andreas, we need to go penguin. Uh, okay, okay. Yes, please. And the rock penguin, they, they do hop. Alright guys, so they're having a seminar about penguins. Alright, so we can spot them out when we see them. Found by the early That's a good question. Why are we going so far south? Because Marguerite Bay is a special place. And, <laughs> and um, the captain and I have been watching this area for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and the ice just blew out. This was totally frozen even just a week or two ago. So we're gonna be some of the first people late in the Antarctic summer to get to come down to this area, so. They're making it a point to let us know that sometimes plans are not gonna go as planned. So just be flexible, but they have all these other options. When you do this trip, just know that sometimes things are not gonna go as planned. Even like kayaking, they don't even know, depending on the weather conditions, determines everything. We know they exist. All right, guys, we are in luck. We get to uh, interview the top executive chef here for the ship. Uh, first off, your name is? Chef Jörg Limon. Okay, cool. Originally from Germany, but living in Sweden. So, can you describe the task of preparing um, dinner and lunch and breakfast for us every day? Oof. <laughs> That's not one task. That's like. 5,000 tasks. <laughs> yeah. Starting with standing up early in the morning, like uh, between 6 and 7, depending when um, we have landings or when we have sea days. Like, sea days is nice, it's 8 o'clock breakfast, so it's easy going. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, landing days can be 5, even earlier. And uh, yeah, then checking out all the rounds, all the places where food is served first. Okay. Then checking is everything available from the guys for lunch service, for dinner service. Making sure that the menu is updated. They have to be coming to the metro day so he can print the menus and make the labels for food buffet and stuff. Then doing the service, going around, checking out guests, getting, getting feedback, How making sure everything is well. How much food are you making every day? How much? Well, we have the breakfast and lunch buffet with multiple choices and um, then the dinner buffet, or the dinner service. Plus we do the pool grill up here. So right now we have just about 100 guests on board times four meals plus tea time, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's qu it quite, qu quite a few dishes. Okay, <laughs> what is your inspiration? What is your inspiration for creating some of these special dishes? Well, um, when I started in May last year, the company sent me around to a certain restaurant. So I was for one week in Moscow. There was one Korean restaurant and was working with a chef there. And uh, after that, I was one week in Italy with another Michelin star restaurant okay. chef. And uh, then, yeah, myself, I've been around around the kitchens in 30 plus years and 20 years on sea. So uh, yeah, just a mix out of everything. 
Plus you have to have the, the classic ones, you have to have the Wellington, the roast duck, you have the mm. steaks and those ones sort of come automatically with all menus. What do you want people to know about their food experience here if they come on and you're the chef? Well for me it's, it's you never can really put it like what I do. It's we are here to please everybody and like on this cruise I think we have like 11 different nationalities just on the guests. Everybody expects different things. So we have to make sure we, we find the right thing for everybody in the regular menu and outside I try to yeah, pick up points where people seem not really happy or seem that something is missing and try to do them side orders, do special things and make them that way happy. The good part is being on a small ship like this with only 100 plus guests, you have much more possibility to go individual on guest okay. time. Okay, what about uh, expectations like you have for your staff? They need to be flexible, <laughs> flexible, flexible, flexible. Uh, working on ships is a eh, tough and we are in, at the end of the world literally Ushuaia is called the end of the world and uh, it's difficult to get supplies so whatever you get is what you have it's no choice you take it or you have no supplies yeah so you have to be very yeah creative and flexible to make the best out of what you have if you're stocked and kind of no no i have to have this to make this it won't, won't function you have to be creative and flexible so like when you hire your cooking staff what do you look for in terms of i rather look for people which have been working on small size ships because expedition is always different and a bit more complicated um, ship's experience is, is necessary you won't be able to start as a cook here first time it's not possible you can do that on big ships where you can hide in the numbers when you have like 20 30 people in one station i have only 17 in the whole galley so everybody is like one i have one baker one butcher one pastry so wow. if one goes sick everybody else has to jump in and help on a big ship you have like seven butchers six bakers it's, it's a top game so here you have to have which brings back the flexibility full power Oh wow. Oh, that's it. Is there anything you want to tell the future guests? Oh, keep on booking. It's job security for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Thank you. Okay. She's ready for the food, guys. We're about to eat another awesome dinner. All right, guys. Enjoy. Yo, this is my uh, entree right here. And this is what these guys are eating crab cakes. So, beautiful assorted salad. And, uh, yes. Looks crab good. cake. Yes. Very, more crab cake. Yeah, guys. <laughs> all right. So, they've been teaching me how to sip wine properly. So, I'm learning. Uh, new techniques every day, okay? <laughs> All right. Sure so, depends what you learn. But what I learn is so when we turn it, when we're spinning it, we don't use our hands like this or like this or like this. You want to use it like this, okay? You want to use everything. Nine, nine times, exactly. Nine times? And then once the other way. Oh, really? Okay. One, two, three, four. Uh, you want the nice spin. And then you get that three, uh, there you go. And then you got to spin it the other way. Then boom. And then you can tell how heavy the alcohol, well, the wine is based off how it, you know, hangs on the glass. So there you go, guys. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. Enjoy, enjoy the food, okay? Don't worry, I'm not going to be filming. Guys, when you look outside at that camera, it looks like it's snowing. Go check it out. Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first video, try to watch all the other episodes and catch up so you don't miss what's happening next. I guarantee you, it's going to be crazy. Yo.